Okay, we're now heading into the session entitled Viral Hepatitis B and D Preclinical and Early uh, Clinical. And our first speaker is Professor Stefan Urban, who's Professor of Translation Virology at the University of Heidelberg, and he's going to address what have we learned since the identification of the HBV entry receptor NTCP. Yeah, thank you very much for your invitation. Um, what I would like to do within the next 20 minutes, uh, switch a little bit into molecular virology, a basic understanding of the early infection events of hepatitis B and Delta virus. But I would like to take the opportunity to also reflect a little bit on whether that might be a target for the development of new therapeutic options in the future that might have a potential uh, of a curative treatment. These are my disclosures. Now, this picture shall remind us who we are dealing with. We are dealing with a para-retro element that has evolved during hundreds of millions of years. And we are talking about eradication of such a successful uh, uh, para-retrovirus. Uh, and you should be remembered that these hepatnaviruses have been very, very successful during evolution. And we could have even uh, we, we could even pose the hypothesis that they might have provided a selection advantage for their hosts because the fact that they make a progressive liver disease might not have played any role in the evolution of species if that occurs 40 years after the infection. The virus that we are dealing with has some very peculiar uh, um, Properties. So it's a very small virus, the smallest that we know. It's a DNA virus, and all of you know that these have, that most of the viral particles are not infectious. They are just subviral particles that what you are measuring as S antigen, and they probably have a role to cope with the immune system during chronic infication. And they have a peculiar host specificity and exclusively replicates in differentiated hepatocytes. So this virus has adopted to a differentiated liver cell and it's probably very sensitive against cell proliferation. We at least cannot infect proliferating hepatocytes. And we know that the recently identified receptor, NTCP, that probably all of you know as a bile acid transporter, um, plays a major role as a host determining uh, 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 factor. Single amino acid exchanges in that receptor make cyanomogous monkeys, for example, not susceptible to HPV. If you change that, position, you can do an infection in those cells. Now, if we're talking about the receptor usage and the envelope, we have to look a little bit on what is uh, the key uh, molecules in that envelope proteins. You know, all know we have these three molecules, the L protein, the M, and the S. And one of the very important determinants for entry and the NTCP binding site is located in the very N-terminal part of the pre-S domain of that receptor. And what we've done, and I will come a little bit to that, um, we've looked whether these peptides at the end terminus can interfere with infection. The point is we started with that experiment quite a while ago with ducks and so, um, and the problem was that we didn't have the infection systems because most of the hepatoma cells that you normally use for, uh, for, for, for uh, experimental settings are non-susceptible to HPV because they lack NTCP, as we now know. This is a model that we use for a long time. These are primary human hepatocytes that you can nicely infect uh, with hepatitis B virus, as you can see on the, here under the right condition. And if you put that ligand of the virus to the cells before, address NTCP, at that time we didn't know that it is NTCP, um, you can completely block infection. Now, the target of that peptide, the target of the virus was, as I said, for a long time, completely unknown, until in 2012, uh, the group of Wen Hui Li found by a chemical cross-linking a molecule that specifically binds to that pre domain, and that is uh, the NTCP. We also confirmed these results, and if you look at what the NTCP is doing, you probably all know it is a part of the enterohepatic pathway used for retransportation of conjugated bile acids into the hepatocytes after uh, uh, reabsorption of the conjugated tauroculate, for example, bile acids uh, into the cell. And it's a complex molecule in the membrane, and it needs a sodium 
uh, co-transport, and it's very important in bile, bile salt homeostasis. So it's regulated at the surface expression. Now that's on the basis of that our current model, how these viruses, and I'm talking about hepatitis B and delta, because delta has the same envelope proteins like hepatitis B virus. Now what we think is that the viruses enter the space of this A, um, and have to bind before they can attach to NTCP to heparin sulfate proteoglycan. The virus is not able to bind directly to NTCP. That's very important. People that are chronically infected do not have elevated bile acids and their NTCP is working normally. So the binding to the virus occurs after these envelope proteins rearrange probably during interaction with heparin sulfate proteoglycans, and then make an interaction with NTCP that is then irreversible. And what we now know is that after binding to NTCP, um, there is endocytosis going on and release of the nucleocapsid or the ribonuclear protein in the case of HPV. It's very important to note that these steps are sensitive against any kind of substrate of NTCP. So not only to this peptidic ligand that I showed you before from the virus itself, which has adapted to that molecule, but also, for example, to bile acids with very high concentration. You can block HPV infection with bile acids, and you can also block, for example, with cyclosporin or with ecetimib. So any substrate of NTCP might interfere with HPV infection. The question is how irreversible is that and how good can that be? Now, these are the arguments, and I want to elaborate a little bit on what can we do now with that finding. These are the arguments for NTCP. You see here the Merclodex in red and the green NTCP, and if you add that Merclodex to the cell, you get a complete co-localization. So the target is really NTCP of that viral ligand. The very good thing is that non susceptible cell lines that we try to use, so HEPG2 cells, UH7 cells, can be made susceptible by just transfecting NTCP in those cells. So we can generate new infection system by expressing this molecule NTCP in UH7 cells for delta with a very high efficacy under the right conditions, HEPG2 cells for HPV, you see here core stain of HPV after infection, and this is L stain and this is the co stain. So we have solved, and that's a very important thing, a major problem. We have now robust infection systems for HPV that can be used for several approaches. Another very clear indication that NTCP plays a role is if you, for example, use that peptide, as I call it, Mucrodex as a lead substance, radioactively label it and inject it into a mouse, it's specifically enriched in the liver, telling you this very specific uh, expression of the molecule in the liver of these mice. If you mutate that peptide, you just have the binding to albumin and a kind of uh, dispersed distribution. We can generate now knockout mice, which we use now, of course, for uh, uh, mouse studies. And if you add the Merclodex in the knock NTCP knockout mouse, you see now no accumulation in the liver. So it's an extremely specific interaction with NTCP, and that's the intermediate phenotype uh, of a heterozygote mouse. This is a homozygote mouse. So it's definitely the receptor. And I show you, for example, some applications that are very important and that are currently used. And this is you can scale down, for example, these infection systems to a 384 bell plate, which is a key for drug screening in big high throughput screening approaches. So you can nicely see here infection in that well format, you can inhibit it, for example, with that. And there are hundreds of thousands of drugs that are presently screened by several pharmaceutical companies and also academics on the way to find new drugs that interfere with the replication cycle. So this practical uh, application can be compared with the replicon system that have been uh, 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 used in the HCV field for finding the new drugs, and we will looking forward what's coming out in these kind of screens of new drugs that target different molecules, but, uh, but the polymerase, for example. Now, another very important thing that we are facing now with this discovery and TCP is probably uh, the, the generation of uh, immunocompetent 
animal models, especially small animal models. So a Hep G2 cell, as I told you, is not susceptible to HPV. A mouse cell line that is transformed or transfected with human NTCP can also not be infected. There is a factor still missing. So we don't have an animal model yet in mice by just putting in the receptor. It works for Delta, but not for HPV. Our question was, what happens if we fuse these both cells? Do we get uh, an infection of the fused cells that would hint to a lacking dependency factor that can be provided by the human cell, the Hep G2 cell, or do we have an active restriction? Just show you the result of that thing, which is now in uh, revision. So this is a uh, uh, without fusion, no infection of these mouse cells. If you fuse these both cells, you get infection, and you can nicely see that you can infect a, a mouse cell and a, a human cell that has been fused um, if you provide this receptor by the mouse cell. So there is obviously a factor missing. And if we find that factor, we would have probably, or factors, we would have probably immunocompetent mouse models, which are, of course, very, very valuable for immunological studies in the future. So this is another application of this NTCP. And um, I would have liked to show you, but obviously this is lost, also that you can use these cell lines now for in vitro immunological studies. So of course you can in, uh, incubate those infected cells with T cells and look at immunological responses that allows us to, uh, to investigate this. Now, let me come a little bit now at the second part to the conceptual thoughts. What could we do if we address NTCP as a therapeutic target? Of course, the obvious thing that you could th think of is the prophylactic use. So we could use that peptides or whatever small drugs that you might develop for preventing the vertical transmission from infected mothers to newborns. You can also think in preventing the reinfection of a liver transplantation. So things that you're presently doing using HBICs, so immunoglobulins, which are very expensive and use really high amounts. This is probably much more efficient. And of course, you could use it for preventing flares under immunosuppressive therapy. Now, interesting for us was the question, what would happen if you do that in a chronic setting? So if you assume you have already infected hepatocytes, you have probably a turnover of hepatocytes, and you prevent and protect naive and regenerated hepatocytes from de novo infection. So you just prevent the de novo formation of CCC DNA, which, by the way, cannot be prevented by tenofovir, because tenofovir, or entecavir, interacts with the later step of infection and cannot prevent the entry and the establishment of CCC DNA. Now, would a sustained entry inhibition be a curative potential? That's the big question, if you do it long enough until the liver re regenerates. And what would happen if you do that in combination, maybe, with strategies that are aiming at eliminating infected cells? So that might be a possible curative uh, 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 regimen, maybe reflect a little what happens if you resolve an acute infection. You kill some uh, cells, you lead to proliferation, have a non-cytolytic clearance, and you have antibodies that prevent de novo infection and de novo establishment of CCC DNA. A very important point, because before I show you some clinical data that will be elaborated later on, also by Ami and by, by Heiner, is that you should think of that the virological effects that you observe in a clinical trial, if you use an entry inhibitor alone, is different from what you see if you use, for example, a nucleoside inhibitor, a direct anti acting antiviral, because the effects reflect, reflect the loss of infected cells. To the best of our knowledge, the entry inhibitors targeting NTCP do not interfere with virus release or relate step. They just block the entry and if you see a virological effect, it reflects probably the reduction of infected cells and not the enzymatic activity or the efficacy in addressing an enzyme, which directly would lead to a loss of virus. So keep that uh, in mind. It's a very important pain point. I mean, the, now the question is, 
can angio inhibition contribute to CCC DNA loss in a chronically infected patient? Of course, that's what we want to know, what you want to know as a, uh, uh, as a clinician. Now, the last five minutes, I would like to show you at least some data of that proof of, uh, 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 of concept of the Merclodex in an HPV trial. So there were uh, three trials. There was an hepatitis delta trial or two delta trials. Heiner will elaborate on that probably with that entry inhibitor Merclodex. And there was one trial performed in HPV uh, mono-infected cells to get that concept. The, the, whole, the whole phase one was successful. Uh, there were no toxicity. Um, we know from addressing the NTCP receptor that the side effects are associated with elevated bile acid levels if you saturate the receptor. It's also a very important point to mention that we do not need to saturate that receptor. That's very interesting that the IC50 is for inhibiting the bile acid transport is about 1,000-fold higher than the IC50 for HPV infection. So we can find conditions where we address the receptor function but not the natural bile acid transporter function, which might be therapeutically very interesting for long-term treatment. Now, this has been done in the collaboration of a MIR GmbH and uh, the, the clinics in Moscow and several other uh, 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 clinics in, in Russia. So the population that were uh, selected were e antigen negative chronic hepatitis B virus patients that were without tre prior treatment with uh, HPV more than 10,000 copies and an active hepatitis and elevated ALT levels. And the idea, the design was that uh, we treated 48 patients in six treatment arms, eight patients per arm. There were several concentration of Merclodex, 0.5, 1, 2, and 5 for 12 weeks and 12 weeks follow-up as shown here. We know that from two milligram on, Two milligram is not saturating the receptor. So we have here concentrations that is not saturating NTCP, and five and 10 milligram group that was then tested subsequently for 24 weeks on the basis of the safety of this first result, um, uh, oversaturate that receptor completely. So these patients are on Merclodex for half a year and have a completely blocked NTCP function. And a control arm was in Tecavir, and we were looking for safety, tolerability, biochemical response, virological response, immunogenicity. And I can, of course, for time reasons, not go into this whole uh, essay. So the safety, uh, make it very shortly, there were, of course, adverse effects, but there were no severe adverse effects during the treatment, but two after removal of Merclodex when a rebound of HPV came and standard of care was used. Uh, to, to control that, uh, that rebound, and there were in the high-dose group um, side effects in the injection site dermatitis, so it's uh, injectable, you have to inject it subcutaneously at, uh, daily. So this is the control arm. As you expect, you get a reduction of HPV DNA with entecavir by 3.3 log at week 12, so that's what we observed in the control arm. And, um, it's uh, interesting that you have this exponen exponential uh, decline, and if we now look at what happens if we use this, the, the, the lowest dose of, uh, of Merclodex, you can see that depending on the patient and also the load, you get a kind of linear reduction of uh, HPV DNA levels during 12 weeks with a mean of 0.8 log uh, at week 12 with this low dose. If you take that speculation or hypothesis that with that drug we only interfere with entry, you could calculate that you have within that time frame 15 out of 100 infected cells lost, uh, no, not lost, uh, remaining with HPV. So there is a kind of linear uh, de dependence and one out of 10,000 cells after 60 weeks with that monotherapy. And if you look at the other doses, you see a similar effect. So one milligram, two milligram, five milligram, 10 milligram. Interestingly, the 10 milligram dose with complete oversaturation show you a stronger effect with 1.5 log at week 12 in the 10 milligram group. A very interesting observation was the observation that you normalize ALT levels during Merclodex monotherapy. That was surprising for us because, of course, you do not reduce very much at the beginning any kind of antigen. 
during that treatment. And our explanation is that the ongoing cytolytic immune responses in those chronically infected patients leading to the elevated bile acid, uh, to the elevated ALT levels, preferentially address the newly infected cells. So persistently infected cells might be inert against the ongoing immune response. And if we understand that better, what makes them more or less restricted against the attack of an immune cell, that would be, of course, very interesting. And Mercury XP may control the progression of the immune-mediated liver disease, and that might also explain how nucleoside analogs work at all with respect to normalizing the ALT levels. Now let me go through the key hypothesis that we have for a curative therapy. What we think is that the prevention of de novo formation of CCC DNA is one important pile for future uh, therapeutic uh, curative therapies. By angioinhibition, we can think in block of delivery of nuclear capsids, but it must be an early step, one before CCC DNA formation. And then we should remove or control the CCC DNA in the persistently infected cells. I think that is the key that we have to, uh, uh, to find out maybe for, for, for the future therapeutic regimens. Now let me summarize here. Uh, it's a lot of things written here, but just uh, that you should remind that the bile salt transporter and TCP is a long salt specific receptor for Delta and for HPV. It's a major determinant of the host specificity of hepatovirus and hepatitis delta virus. Its expression in hepatoma cells leads to robust infection system that will allow us to screen for new drugs. And you will, f you will see within the next years what's coming up from that screens. And it's also a key, at least one key, in developing a, uh, a mouse animal models in the future or other animal models that can be used for immunological studies. Um, it's, which I didn't mention yet, it's very interesting that there are polymorphisms in the NTCP. Asian people have about 8% of an NTCP polymorphism that does not support HPV infection, and they have uh, resistance, associated with resistance to chronic hepatitis B virus. Other substrates of NTCP also interact, and Merculase is one of them, it was safe in clinical trials, and it show effect by decline of, of, uh, of DNA in patients. And these patients normalized ALT levels, which is an interesting immunological finding. And uh, what we think, or what I think, a combination of an entry inhibition with the novel approaches that aim to eliminate infected cells might be a key for future curative therapies. And um, there is the potential maybe and one should do, for example, a combination with uh, interferon as a next step uh, uh, for HPV infection to see whether we have better uh, response rates for that. This is the, uh, the, the grants that we have got. Most of that has initially been funded by uh, public funding for the BMBF. There's a Deutsche Zentrum for Infektionsforschung as well. And then there's a cooperation with industrial funding uh, from Hepatera and from MIR GmbH, Hightech Gründerfonds, and the HP. Uh, competence that hepatitis more involved, EFG, and uh, we are now looking for further things. We have received for Delta virus orphan drug designation in the U.S. and in, the, uh, and in Europe, and there are now preferentially two clinical trials planned and, and start soon for Delta-infected patients, and we will see what comes out here. And I thank you for your attention.